Well, hey, everybody. Wow, y'all got quiet at the end of the countdown today. I hope that's not a sign of things to come. Uh, please, please feel free to rejoice and celebrate all you want to this morning, because that's why we're here, right? Okay, it's going to be that day. Y'all stand with me, please. I am glad you're here. What you don't know is we wired the seats with uh, an electrical current this, this week, so you can either shout voluntarily or involuntarily. You choose. I'm kind of hoping for the involuntary. I'm going to try this button out here in just a minute. Let's pray, y'all. Thank you, Lord, for the chance to be together in this house, in your house today. And Lord, we just, uh, despite how quiet we are, we are grateful in our hearts for all of the good things that you've done in our lives. Lord, for every good and perfect gift that you've given us, we are grateful. And Lord, we came today to celebrate you and your goodness and your greatness. And Lord, I just pray that you would anoint uh, uh, every word that's spoken and sung, every note that's played. I pray, God, that you would get the glory from everything that's done and said in this house today. Because Lord, we want to lift you up. We want to bless your name. Lord, we want you to be glorified above everything and everybody else. And Lord, I just pray that you are blessed by our praise. And Lord, that you draw us to yourself today and speak to us the things that we need to hear. Do in us the things that, that we need for you to do. And Lord, when all is said and done, we go our separate ways today. I pray that we go rejoicing in what we've heard and experienced with you and saying and knowing that it's been good to be in the house of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's worship the Lord, y'all.
Lord, for your goodness. There's no one like you, God. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings. Thank you, Lord, for your promises that they are yes and amen. Thank you that you are working even when we can't see it, God. Even when we can't feel it, God, you are still working in us. You are still working around us for our good.
good to us, isn't he? Listen, won't you be seated for just a second? Still in the presence of the Lord, those that are in the altar can stay in the altar. That's, that's what we that's what we come here for, right? Meet with the Lord. The word says that Jesus is um, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. What makes our walk with the Lord so meaningful and so good is that he's not just there at the beginning and the end, but he's there in every moment in between, right? In every season of our lives, he's there. He's there with us when we're on the mountain. He's there with us when we're in the valley. He's there with us when we're in the, in the mundane, mediocre, boring stuff that accounts for, what, 80% of our lives. All of that, he's with us. And he's the same God, but he doesn't express himself to us in the same ways because we need him in different ways at different times in our lives. And so even as we uh, come and celebrate the goodness of the Lord, we can also depend upon him to be there for us in the most difficult moments of our lives. And I want to share with you some news that I'm sure most of you have heard by now, either through social media or, or if you're on the calling post or the text or the email that we sent yesterday. Uh, we lost one of our own yesterday, Miss, Miss Christy Cash. Um, she was a wife and a daughter. She was a mom and a nana, kindergarten teacher, and a friend. For many of you, she was the first face you saw when you came into Covenant Life. She was on our greeting team for a long time. Her husband, Mitch, uh, is our men's ministries coordinator. She had a very brief but brutal battle with cancer. But we are grateful this morning that she is no longer suffering. And she is no longer in pain. The same cannot be said for those who are left behind. For Mitch and for uh, the kids and the grandkids and the friends and the colleagues and the students, her little busy bees, um, they're hurting and they need our prayers this morning. She was, uh, she was just 48. Her service will be here um, at Covenant Life this week at some point. We're thinking probably Thursday, but all of that hasn't been finalized yet. We'll let you know. I'm sure we'll also be providing a meal for the family. Um, if you want to be notified of all of those arrangements, then, then please make sure that you grab a connection card and you sign up on, for the calling post or the text uh, message or the emails, and we'll, we'll get all that out to you um, this week. Um, so what do we do as a body, as a family? Well, we lift each other up. We encourage each other. We help each other. We pray for each other. And so um, that's what we're going to do. We're going to pray. Uh, so if you would, just bow your heads. If you're sitting beside somebody uh, that you don't mind grabbing a hand, just do that for me if you would. Lord, we, uh, as a body, you said we rejoice with those who rejoice and we mourn with those who mourn. And maybe the hard thing is that uh, in, a, in a congregation this size, it, sometimes there are people in the same place that are rejoicing. Some of them are rejoicing and some of them are mourning. And I pray that you help us to do a, do a good job of supporting everybody wherever they are in, our lives, in their lives. But Lord, today we know that the Cash family and the community is mourning. And so, Lord, we lift, we lift up the Cash family today. Lord, I pray that you be with Mitchell that you manifest yourself in his life uh, in a way that maybe he's never experienced you before. God, would you, um, would you give him strength and give him peace where he has none? I pray, Lord, that you give him rest in his body and in his soul. I pray, Lord, for the kids and for <clears throat> the friends, the other family members. that you'd speak peace, that you would give us wisdom to know how to support them. And I pray, God, that we, uh, that we not just be here for this week for the celebration of life and for uh, all of the activities that surround this kind of end-of-life observation. Lord, help us to be there next week and next month and 
at the holidays. Lord, I pray that you help us just to come alongside this family and wrap them in our arms as you wrap us all in your arms, that you would comfort us through your spirit and use us, Lord, to be a comfort to this family as they grieve and as they mourn. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you for for that. Listen, if you need anything, if you need any assistance, um, let me know. We'll, we, we're going to help each other through this. Um, So that's all we're going to talk about this morning. <clears throat> if this is your first time here, I'm sorry that you uh, have to be here on such an occasion, but um, you know what? This is real life. And I don't know about you, but I need my church when we go through these kinds of struggles. So um, you have, you have uh, stepped into a place that we don't shy away from real life. We don't gloss over, we don't uh, sand off the rough edges and try to present something that is, um, that is false. So when we hurt, we say we hurt. When we rejoice, we say we rejoice and everything in between. And So um, thank you for being here. We would love for you, if you, if you would, um, to fill out a connection card. Uh, I hope you got a gift bag on the way in. If you did not, then we'd love to get you one on the way out, so just stop by the counter and we'll make sure you get a gift bag. In that bag is a connection card. They're also in the seat back pockets in front of you. Uh, you can also scan the, the QR code that's on the screens now, whether you're here in person or you're watching online, you do that and it'll take you all to the same place. If you'll just give me your name and some form of contact, I'd just like to personally reach out to you this week to uh, introduce myself and to say thanks for being here, okay? So if you would do that for me, I really would appreciate it. And you can, you can drop it in the, in the gift boxes in the back. You can leave it on the counter or you can hand it to any member, to me or any member of the staff that you would like, all right? Uh, thank you. So last week, my family was on vacation. Uh, thank you for giving us a chance to get away. And um, thanks for Jordan for, for filling the pulpit for me and doing such a fantastic job. He always does. And I really appreciate uh, the way the way this team just carries on, whether I'm here or not, and, and I appreciate that very much. Uh, y'all did a youth fundraiser last weekend, and uh, I thank you so much for supporting. I think Robbie said we, we gave out over 100 meals last week after church, and they raised over $1,000. So that was a good hot dog, y'all. I mean, $1,000 worth of hot dogs. Um, thank you for doing that. Y'all always step up. You always support uh, everything that uh, that we do, and I so much appreciate that. Um, one thing that's coming up is water baptism service. Now, I told you when I did the state of the message, the state of the, the church message this year, that we were going to fill up that baptistry and we were going to baptize. We were going to be ready to baptize people every month. Um, I in the in the blur that was the month of May. Y'all do realize May has already come and gone. Did y'all did y'all see it? Um, in the blur that was the month of May, I failed to even announce it or remind you of it. And so M May has, was the first month this year that we haven't baptized people. Uh, so we're going to rectify that in June. Uh, so June 26th, if you'd like to be baptized in water, um, please let me know. You do that by filling out a connection card. So just let me know uh, on the connection card that you want to be baptized in water. And we will get you all the information that you need. Uh, or you can also see uh, Cindy Williams. Cindy, will you wave over here? So if you're in person, you can see Cindy. I'd ask her to stand, but it wouldn't really help much. Uh, so she's, she's over there. Sorry. She's my little sister. I get to pick on her when I want to. Um, so y'all let, let us know one way or the other, and we will, uh, we'll get you the information. Um, so we're going to, we, uh, people tell me all the time, Pastor, if you need any help with anything, just let me know. Right? Almost all of you have said that at some point. And then I walk away and promptly forget who said what they wanted to help me with. Um, and so when I need stuff, I can't ever remember who it is that's going to help me. So um, I want to create a few lists to help my aging brain. Um, so if you would be willing to help 
I have, I have people say, hey, if you need some errands run, I, I don't work or I work, I, I don't work a lot during the week, I, I, can, I can help you. If you would be willing to run errands to just go pick stuff up, to run to the store and buy something, to take something from one place to the other, then that's one group of people. So if you're an errand runner, that's great. If you are willing to help outside, a lot of people say, I like to work outside. I like to cut grass. I like to trim bushes or whatever. If you like to work outside and you're willing to do that, that's another group. If you're an inside person, you're like, hey, if you need help moving chairs, you need help setting up for an event, please let me know. If you need help cleaning the church, let me know. That's another group. So this is what I'm going to ask you to do. If you will grab a connection card and you're willing to be in any of those groups, then uh, grab a connection card, put your name, some form of contact, and which group, which uh, or all of the groups, whatever, uh, just let me know which group you are willing to be a part of so that I can put you on a list. And I think, I, uh, Robbie, I don't remember what we came up with. Are we going to do group me? We're going to do some, some sort of texting communication app. I see hands moving, Robbie. I can't see your thumb. So it might be thumbs up, thumbs down. I don't know. We're going to put you in a group. Um, that when I need something, I'm just going to send out a message to that group who said they would help in that area. If you can help, you respond. If you can't, no big deal. Nobody's going to come to your house, harass you, shoot through your windows or anything, probably. So um, if you're willing to do that, just sign up on the connection card and uh, we'll get those groups set up, okay? Um, if you came prepared to give tithes or offerings today, if you came in person and you want to give that way, then there are giving boxes at each of the exits. You go ahead and help yourself. Um, please use a giving envelope so that we can properly give you credit on the end of the year stewardship report. If you'd prefer to give electronically, you can certainly do that as well. Whatever's most convenient for you, we certainly appreciate every gift and everything, uh, everything that you do for, uh, for the kingdom through this church. You are a blessing to me and, uh, and to this community and to the world. So I've got some, got some exciting things that are coming up that I'm ready to share with you about. Some updates on the Jericho Project and what our next steps are and how far we are from being able to take, take the next step. Some other, uh, some other ministry opportunities that actually will extend the reach of Covenant Life around the world. And I am excited about telling you those things. They'll be coming up uh, soon in an episode that's upcoming. So please still stay tuned. All right. Y'all grab your Bibles. <clears throat> Grab your Bibles, turn with me to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. And suddenly there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm. And it filled the house where they were sitting. And then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them, not all of them collectively, but each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages or other tongues as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. Father, we, just, uh, we, we rejoice in your truth, we rejoice in your word, and we thank you for, uh, for preserving it for us through the ages. I pray, God, that we, uh, that we do uh, a good job of handling your word, rightly dividing it, presenting the whole counsel of God, and help us to understand what it is that you are trying to communicate to us. Lord, would you anoint me to deliver the message that I, that I believe you've laid on my heart? Would you anoint us to hear it? Uh, fr straight from your throne, not from my mouth, Lord. Remove any, any filters or anything that I might add to it, and I pray that each of us would hear uh, exactly what it is that you want us to hear. And, Lord, that we wouldn't just be hearers, but we'd be doers of that word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So I heard a country song um, a few years ago, and it said, it said this, you, she's like a Sunday morning. Full of grace. Y'all don't sing out loud now. People know you'd be listening to country music. Full of grace and full of Jesus. And I thought, man, what a compliment that is, right? I mean, what, what a wonderful thing to say about somebody. To be, to be full of grace and full of Jesus. And almost everybody that I know would be flattered, would be appreciative, 
of such a statement. But listen, what if, what if that songwriter had said, she's like a Sunday morning, full of grace and full of the Holy Spirit? You know, it gets a little weird now, right? But, but why is that? Why does that sit and sound so different? Why, why all the love for Jesus, but not for the Holy Spirit? Why is it okay to have a t-shirt that says, y'all need Jesus? Y'all, some of y'all got those t-shirts, don't you? Y'all need Jesus. But, but a shirt that says, y'all need the Holy Spirit, would come across weird. Why is it that, why is it you can say, I'm a man or a woman of God, I'm a follower of Jesus, but people back up and look side, sideways at you when you say, I walk in the Spirit and not in my flesh. This is Pentecost Sunday. Right? Celebrated all over the world, or or at least um, uh, observed all over the world as the day that the Holy Spirit came to the New Testament church. And and that is is wonderful, and and we need to observe that. And I want to take a a few minutes today on Pentecost Sunday and maybe try to get to the root of some of the the standoffishness and some of the misunderstandings about the Holy Spirit. Try to demystify Him a little bit and help you to see him and respect him and welcome him in the same way that we welcome and respect and see Jesus. So we're going to, we're going to do that. I just said, John, how do you do that? Well, it's actually pretty easy. You just open the Bible and you see what it says about him, what it really says about him. Okay. So here's part of the problem. We like to preach Acts chapter two, right? We love to preach the Acts 2 passage that I just read. And we like to talk about the, the rushing mighty wind. We like to talk about the tongues of fire, the, the boisterous worship of the 120 in the upper room that day. And it's wonderful and a powerful and a valid way that Holy Spirit moves in people's lives. It's great. But, but you can't get to know anybody by just looking at one scene from their lives. You can't just take one snapshot and understand the entirety of a, of a person. So we, we sometimes look only at Acts 2 when we talk about the Holy Spirit. We only look at Acts 2 and, and we ignore all of his other interactions among, with people on this earth. And we make presumptions about him based on that one scene. So today I want us to look at four other passages about the Holy Spirit, and, and, and hopefully will help us to round out our understanding of Him. So are we going to understand Him completely? Nope, because He is infinite. There's no way to understand Him. Besides that, why would you want to serve a God that you could completely understand anyway? So we're going to look at four different passages to help us round out our understanding of Him, and, and I think you might be surprised at some of these. And so this message is called Surprising Roles of the Holy Spirit. Surprising roles of the Holy Spirit. So here we go. First of all, here's the first role. The Holy Spirit is a gift. The Holy Spirit is a gift. Now I know we talk about the gifts of the Spirit or the gifts from the Spirit, but the Spirit is the gift. I just want that to settle on you for a second. The Holy Spirit is the gift. I want to show it to you in Luke chapter 11. Verses 11 through 13. These are the words of Jesus. He said, you fathers, if your children ask for a fish, do you give them a snake instead? Or if they ask for an egg, do you give them a scorpion? Of course not. Jesus said, so if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? Now you see the connection there? Jesus said, you earthly fathers, y'all think you know about gifts? My father has an unbelievable gift that he will give to anyone who asks. The Holy Spirit is the gift that he's offering. Having the Holy Spirit in your life is an incredible privilege. He doesn't just have gifts. He is the gift. And I want, to, I want a couple of things that I want you to notice about the statement of Jesus. First of all, the Holy Spirit comes from the Father. He comes from the Father. We know that the the book of James tells us that every good and perfect gift comes down from our Heavenly Father, right? Everything the Father gives is good. So here's the thing. If the Holy Spirit is a gift 
from God, and we know that God only gives good gifts, then why do we hold back when it comes to the Holy Spirit? He's a good gift. He, he, it's not like one of those prank gifts. It, it's not like a gravy fountain or anything. It's, it's, he's a good gift. He'll only help us. He'll only be a blessing to us as we pursue Christ. He'll only draw us closer to the Father. He'll only make us more like Jesus. He is from the Father, and He is good. And here may be the biggest surprise. He is not weird. <laughs> He's not weird. He's perfectly fine. <laughs> you say, but I know of some spirit-filled people that are weird, and I do too. I can give you names and addresses, right? But Holy Spirit did not make them weird. Weirdness is a pre-existing condition. They were weird before they ever met the Holy Spirit. All right? It has nothing to do with the same, it's just not the same thing, right? He's a good gift from our good Father. Don't let other people get your eyes off the truth. And here's the truth. So read it and learn what it says about him and let that be the thing that supersedes everything else. Here's the second thing I want you to see from the statement of Jesus in Luke 11. The gift of the Holy Spirit is received by asking. If you look at the context of Jesus' statement, you read the beginning from, from the, the beginning of that chapter to, through, uh, through the, the 13th verse, he's, Jesus has been talking about prayer. He's talking about prayer. He says, ask and you shall receive. Y'all heard that? Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it will be open to you. And then he immediately transitions into the conversation that we just read. He says, if, if you want the gift of the Holy Spirit, ask. And, and then by imp implication from the context of the conversation, ask, seek, and knock until you receive the gift. A lot of churches will teach you that when, that when you're saved, you, you have the Holy Spirit and there's no additional pursuit needed. And it's true that you are drawn to repentance by the Holy Spirit. You are convicted of your sin by the Holy Spirit. You are sealed by the Holy Spirit. You have the Spirit of Christ in you or you aren't one of His. That's all biblically accurate. But it does not explain why Jesus Himself would tell you to ask for the gift. Of the Holy Spirit. It doesn't explain why in Acts 4, after Philip had Philip the evangelist had preached and saw hundreds of people saved and water baptized in the, in the city of Samaria, that Peter and John felt the need to go down there and lay hands on them so that they could receive the Holy Spirit. It doesn't explain why in Acts 19, when Paul ran into people that the Bible called believers that he asked them if they had been baptized in the Holy Spirit since they'd believed. Listen, I, I, I understand the struggle with what you may have been taught versus what I just told you and showed you from the Word. But here, here's my challenge to you. Search the Scriptures yourself. Amen. Don't take my word for it. Pick up your Bible and get in the Word for yourself and see if there is not a gift of the Holy Spirit that is offered to us separate and subsequent to salvation. The Holy Spirit's a gift. He's a good gift from a good Father, and all you have to do is ask for the gift. And listen, I don't know about you, I need all the good gifts I can get in my life. Maybe this is a little surprising for you, but the Holy Spirit is a gift and Jesus has put your name on it. He's just waiting on you to ask. So the question is, will you ask for the gift that he has for you today? Here's another maybe surprising role of the Holy Spirit. He's not just a gift. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Jesus. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Jesus. We don't think of him that way. We, because we've got, this, we, we've got all these um, contrived ideas of what the Holy Spirit is. But the Word says He is the Spirit of Jesus. Look at Acts chapter 16, verses 6 through 7. Next, Paul and Silas traveled through the area of Phrygia and Galatia. Uh, that's just on the other side of Gainesville, if you're wondering where those are. Um, because the Holy Spirit had prevented them from preaching the Word in the province of Asia at that time. All right, did y'all get that? They wanted to go a certain place and preach. Holy Spirit said, no, you're not going there right now. Okay. 
Then, coming to the border of Mysia, they headed north for the province of Bithynia, which is just outside of Knoxville. But again, the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them to go. Again, the Spirit of Jesus. It's an equation. He's equating the Holy Spirit, who prevented them from going into Asia, with the Spirit of Jesus, who prevented them from going into uh, Mysia. Okay, Galatians chapter 4, look at this. And because we are his children, God has sent the spirit of his son, the spirit of Jesus, into our hearts, prompting us to call out Abba, Father. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of Jesus. Look at what Jesus said about him. In, in John chapter 14, verses 16 and 17, Jesus said, I'll ask the Father and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He's telling the disciples, this is the night before he leaves, he, he, this, is, this is between the, the Lord's Supper, the Last Supper and uh, the Garden of Gethsemane, and he's having this conversation with them, letting them know, hey dudes, I'm about to be crucified and I'm going to be gone physically from the earth. He said, but don't worry about it, I'm going to send you another advocate who's not going to leave. And you're like, well, I don't know who that is. Well, he tells you in the next verse, he's the Holy Spirit who leads you into truth. The world can't receive him because they're not looking for him and don't recognize him. But you know him because he lives with you now. Who's living with them now? Jesus. And later will be in you. I'm sending you another one, Jesus said. Another one just like me. I've been your advocate. I've been your helper while I was here. But now he's going to be. The Holy Spirit is what Jesus would have been had he not been bound by space and time in a human body. Amen. They aren't the same person but they're, because they're two different persons of the Godhead, right? God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. They're different persons, but they still, they're, they're still the same God. A friend of mine said it this way, Jesus was Emmanuel, God with us. The Holy Spirit is God in us. Does that make sense? Everybody Okay. Y'all still quiet. I'm going to have to get my button out. All right. So, 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 so why, what does it matter? Say, John, okay, so let's say you're right. Who cares? What difference does it make? Well, it, it, it makes a great deal of difference when it comes to demystifying the Holy Spirit. It makes no sense to love Jesus but be sketchy about the Holy Spirit. They're, they're on the same, they're doing the same thing. Right? Holy Spirit took up where Jesus left. He said, I've got to go. I'm leaving the Holy Spirit to be for you what I've been for you in the last three and a half years. So, so when you start welcoming the Holy Spirit's work into your life, you're getting more like Jesus. Amen. As a matter of fact, the flip side is true as well. If you don't cooperate with the Spirit working in your life, you can't get more like Jesus. He is the Spirit at work within you. He's the, he's the Spirit. Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Jesus. Here's another surprising role of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit overshadows and enables. He overshadows and enables. That sounds really ominous, doesn't it? It sounds almost painful. Like, what is that about? Well, listen, I don't, I don't know about you, but there are some days where it seems like there are more things that I can't do than things that I can do. Do y'all have days like that? Or are y'all all perfect? Perfect. Okay, good. Thanks. Um, it, it, there are days that it's more, there, it seems like there's more things that I don't understand than that I do understand. That the older I get, the less I know. And I don't know what that was about. That's not the deal I signed up for. But that's, it's discouraging and it's confusing. In, in Luke chapter 1, the Virgin Mary felt the same way. She's just a teenage girl. The angel had just told her she was going to have a child. But this little simple Jewish girl, though she was young, she understood enough about biology to know that that was an impossibility for her. She was, she was willing to obey God, but she, she just wasn't able to. She was eager to serve and to do what he asked her to do, but she had no capacity within herself to make it happen. It was beyond her. And so this is what happened in Luke chapter 1, verses 34 and 35. Mary asked the angel, but how can this happen? Because I'm a virgin. You just said I'm going to have a baby. <laughs> I don't know how that's going to work. And the angel replied, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. 
and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy and he'll be called the Son of God. Mary, the, the, the angel told her, would be overshadowed by the Holy Spirit. That means, you, if you look at what that, the word literally means, it means completely surrounded by, enveloped in the Holy Spirit. That means he would fill in every gap in her ability. Anything that she lacked, he would provide. Where her limits were, he would exceed those limits. The Spirit's overshadowing would enable her to conceive and carry the Christ even as a virgin. Enable her to endure the scorn and the shame and the criticism that she was going to be for having a baby before she was married. The the Holy Spirit would enable her to deal with the fear and the uncertainty that she must have had when she, she recognizes she's carrying the very Son of God. So when she asked, how is this going to happen? The answer was the Holy Spirit. So listen, life, I don't know if you've noticed this, but life is difficult. Amen. Y'all won't even say amen to that. Life is difficult sometimes. Expectations crush us. Responsibilities weigh us down. I know the, I know the cares of life get heavy. I know even the call of God can be overwhelming on your life. I know when he gives you vision, it's way more than you have the ability to bring to pass. But listen to me, no matter what your limitations are, The Holy Spirit can overshadow you. He can wrap you up in Himself, protecting you, correcting you, healing you, providing for you, remaking you in His image, enabling you to carry out what it is that God has called you to do in His life. Why do you think there were 120 hanging out in the upper room anyway? Because Jesus said, I'm sending you out into the whole world to make disciples, right? That's the mission of our church, mission of every Bible-believing church, to go and make disciples. But he said, but hang on, before you go, go to Jerusalem and wait until the promise of the Holy Spirit. Then you go carry out the plan. Jesus never intended for us to have to do anything on our own. That's why he sent the Holy Spirit. I think it's the greatest con job of uh, of Satan's miserable little life to convince believers that the Holy Spirit is at the very least unnecessary or at worst untrustworthy and scary. Think about what's happened because so many believers don't pursue the Holy Spirit in their lives. Satan knows if he can keep believers from surrendering to the Holy Spirit then he can keep them powerless. He can keep them struggling in their own efforts until they absolutely exhaust themselves. But if we can just break through the deception, there is no telling what God could do through us. Listen, 120 people set the world on fire. We got more than 120 in this room right now, and half of us are on the beach somewhere. You talk about revival... You talk about being a being CL168, being a 168-hour-a-week church, somebody always on task for the kingdom of God. You talk about fulfilling your calling and your purpose. That all happens when you start to trust the Holy Spirit on an everyday basis. A few weeks ago, Val and I shared part of our journey with, with mental health. And we, um, we'd been feeling like we should share for quite a while. Um, And and as a matter of fact, we had already penciled it in several times in the last couple of years, uh, penciled in a date or or maybe two, but she got really anxious about it, rightfully so, right? She got anxious about it. She got nervous. She, 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 as we were talking about the, the sort of reliving those things and talking about, she just got really emotional. She just couldn't, she couldn't talk about it. And I just said, listen, there's, there's no, we don't have to do this. Any t- we don't have to do this, period, but until you're ready, we don't have to do it at all. So just let's just take the pressure off and forget about it. But when, but when we talked about it this time and when we scheduled it this time, it was an entirely different experience. She had perfect peace from the beginning. 
Like I was like, hey, it's you know May is Mental Health Awareness Month, and here's like the only day between Mother's Day and and all the other things we got going on. This is the day. So if we're gonna do it, it's gonna be here. She said, okay, let's do it. And just eyeball to eyeball, she was all good. I was like, well, this is different. We'll see how this works. So we walked through the plan. We started talking about what we'd share, how we'd do it. And she was just like a pro. And like she just does this every day. I mean, y'all saw it, right? She just sat here and just bared her soul, cool as a cucumber, articulate, just, you know, just comfortable. How in the world did that happen? It was the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit. When it's time to do what he wants you to do, he overshadows you. He wraps you up. He hides you in himself. And he gives you the ability to do what you could not do on your own. You might be surprised to know this, but God doesn't love Valerie any more than he loves you. He's a good father. And he will, he will give the Holy Spirit to you as a gift if you'll ask him. You'll ask him. So, well, John, I got no, I got no intentions of ever stepping foot on that platform up there or anywhere else. Listen, Holy Spirit will help you do your job. Why? Because the word says everything that we do, we're to do it as unto Jesus. That everything, the way we live our lives reflects on our relationship with him. So the way you do your job reflects on your relationship with the Lord. Why would the Holy Spirit not be interested in doing that? Holy Spirit will help you in your marriage. Why? Because your marriage is a reflection of the relationship between Christ and the church. That's what Ephesians chapter 5 says. He'll help you in your ministry. He'll help you in your prayer life. He'll help you in your Bible study. He'll help you in your healing and your recovery. He'll help you in your sobriety. There's not a single area of your life that the Holy Spirit can't overshadow you and enable you to do the things that you cannot do on your own to bring Him glory and honor. He's a helper. So why in the world would we not want His help? Here's the, here's the last of the surprising roles of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a conductor of God's grace. He's a conductor of God's grace. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. This, this, a lot of you, this is your favorite passage of Scripture because the Lord knows we need it. Three different times the Apostle Paul said, I begged the Lord to take it away. He had, he had what he called a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to just beat the daylights out of him. That's what Paul said. Uh, we can debate all day about what it might have been. It really doesn't matter because each time, verse 9, each time he prayed, the Lord said, these, these words are in red in your Bible, Jesus said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. That's in quotations. That's the words of Jesus. So now, Paul said, I'm glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. See, somehow we mistakenly think that God uh, only wants from us what we're strong in. He only wants our abilities so that we can be effective in his kingdom. Somehow we've decided that our flaws are fatal, that our limitations will somehow limit the work of the Lord in our lives. But that's worldly thinking. We still think we're supposed to help God out. That we're here on this earth to help God. And that's not really how that works. Paul asked the Lord three times to take something away from him that was really causing him problems. In Paul's mind, really limiting his ability to carry out the work and the plan of God in his life. And all three times the Lord said, my grace is all you need. That my power works best in weakness. So this is set up as a parallel. That, that the, the, uh, the grace in the first sentence is equal to the power in the second sentence. They, they work together. There's further proof in the next verse when he says, I boast of my weakness so the power of Christ can work through me. Now hang on a second. Who's the power of Christ? The same one who's called the Spirit of Christ. We're talking, when we talk about needing God's grace, we're talking about the Holy Spirit. His grace, His power, His Spirit is sufficient for us. It's enough Amen. for us. Amen. His Spirit, Jesus said, is all we need to overcome, 
to endure, even to redeem life's obstacles. To give us strength when we don't have any strength. To make us strong in our broken places. There are some things in our lives that I think we try to hide because we think it limits us. But Jesus is crying out, my grace is sufficient for that. Let, let me, you think it's a weakness that you hide. Let me just speak my spirit, just pour my spirit into that area and see, see what we can do with it, see what I can do with it with my grace. I mean, we all, we all love grace, right? Nobody's afraid of God's grace. So why are we afraid of His Spirit? His Spirit is the one who conducts God's grace into your life. And listen, the more surrendered to His Spirit, the more unhindered His grace flows. The more surrendered to His Spirit, the more unhindered His grace flows. I had this conversation with a pastor this week. Um, when I started in ministry 30 years ago, I was told, um, nobody wants to know you got problems. And he said, the people, who, the, the people in the church look to you to fix their problems. They don't care nothing about your problems. So as far as they're concerned, you don't have any problems. And I said, okay. So that's what I did. For as long as I could stand it. But do you know that kind of pressure will kill you? I mean, it'll kill you spiritually. It'll kill you emotionally. It will kill you physically. Besides that, why would I want to listen to somebody's advice about my problems who ain't never had no problems? Do not follow me for hair care advice. <laughs> Slick as an onion. I got nothing to tell you, folks. How many times should I wash my hair? Don't know. I don't know. I pluck one every once in a while. I just scrub it. I don't know how, but I don't know anything about that. Why in the world would you listen to somebody who's never been through anything, never had a problem, never faced a temptation, never had a trial to tell you how to deal with all of that? What I've discovered is that the more honest I've been with myself and with others about my own limitations, my own challenges, my own problems, the more grace flows into my life. And the more grace I've received, the more likely I've become to give grace to other people. Right? I mean, y'all know, y'all know that if you've been here for the last 10 years or, or even longer, and you've seen sort of the transition as I've gone through stages in my life. And y'all, I cry about everything now. I'm sorry. I just, I cry about stuff. I used to, I do just anything. I just watch a movie just cold. No, oh, that's stupid. Yeah, people go through other stuff. I'm like, well, they just need to just buck up and be strong about it. Listen, you've been through a few things in your life. Once life punches you in the face for about 15 rounds, Amen. it starts making you a little softer towards what other people go through. Right? You kind of get over yourself and you go, man, that's got to hurt. I'm sorry you're going through that. I've been through a few things myself and I'm sorry about that. It just, it makes you more compassionate. But, but listen, isn't, isn't that what the essence of ministry is freely giving what you have freely received. And I've received the grace of God so many times in my life for so many different things that now the, 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 the impetus is upon me to, to share that with everybody else. That's what the Holy Spirit does in your life. He brings that grace into your life so you can just turn around and send it right on back out. Bree, Bree, come on in uh, and play something. Don't. I'm afraid there are too many people in the church who have fallen for the lies of the enemy when it comes to the Holy Spirit. Some of you may be surprised at how the Spirit is actually portrayed in the Word of God. How approachable He is. How helpful He is. How much like Jesus He is. So let me ask you this. Could you use an advocate let, let, me, let me break this down in Harrelson County language. Could you use some help? <laughs> could you use a helper? Like, not all help is good help, right? I'm talking about could you use good help? Could you use a comforter? Could you use an encourager? 
Could you use an intercessor who presents your needs to the throne? Could you use someone who overshadows your flaws and your limitations and enables you to do what God calls you to do? Could you use a good gift from a good father? Then take God at his word and surrender yourself to the Holy Spirit today. Y'all stand with me, please. Here's the altar call. Real simple. Now listen, just a minute, I'm going to pray. And, uh, and, and the altar's open. It's always, it's always open. So y'all, y'all come on down whenever you want to. They're going to sing. And, and, uh, and after that song, we'll, we'll be dismissed together. But, but we're at a very, very important stage of this service because um, this is a time where you sort of do business with the Lord about what it is He brought you here to hear. Okay? So here's the altar call. And it's not complicated at all. I I just want to challenge you to do what Jesus said in Luke chapter 11. I just want to challenge you to ask for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Just ask. That's all. You're like, what else, John? No, that's it. Just ask. He's like, well, do I like, is there a certain position? Are there like words or magic words? My hands have to be at 45 degrees. Nope. Just ask. That's what Jesus said. He said, just ask. I don't care what your experience with Him is. I don't care if you consider yourself to be baptized in the Holy Spirit or if you are like the guys in Acts 19, you're like, I ain't never even heard of the Holy Spirit. It doesn't matter where you are because there's no one-time deals with the Lord except salvation, right? And when it comes to, to being surrendered to the Holy Spirit, that's a daily decision, sometimes a moment-by-moment decision. So, so you can put your spiritual resume back in your pocket that's not impressing anybody. The challenge from the Word of God today is ask for the Holy Spirit and surrender yourself to whatever He says. No walls, no limits, no locked doors in your, in your house. If you love Jesus... You have to receive the gift that He left for you. The Holy Spirit. Father, thank You for Your Word. Thank You that Jesus did not leave us comfortless. He didn't leave us helpless. He didn't leave us powerless. That He said, hey, I'm going away, but it's better for You that I go away because I'm sending the Holy Spirit. And I pray, Lord, that right now You would begin to unteach the things that we've learned that were wrong, that you would begin to, uh, to, to reveal to us the character and the nature, the true character and nature of the Holy Spirit. I pray that you help us to see that, that the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are one. I pray that you help us to see that He only wants what's good for us, that He never forces Himself upon us. And God, I just pray that you'd help us to depend more and more every day more and more upon your spirit to walk in the spirit and not in our flesh to to not depend upon our power and our knowledge but depend on the holy spirit to lead us and to guide us and enable us to do what it is that you've called us to do lord we need your grace and we know that that comes through your spirit so lord i pray that you would move in the heart of every person every believer in this place today on this day of pentecost that we would receive your gift today and every day and Lord there are other people here I am certain who are struggling with other things with grief with financial needs with needs in their body with decisions they have to make all of those things Lord and as you I just pray that you draw them to this altar and that you would meet them here Father with the answer to the need that they have in their lives because we know you love us and you're a good father pray, Lord, your blessing on us in these next few minutes. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.